But let me actually kick the actual episode off. Welcome once again, everybody, to episode six of the Paul and Pals IG Live show. I'm your host, Pony Boy Paul. And uh, for this episode, I'll be interviewing my pal, Everichi Obuaku. And uh, I kind of put a little description of what she does and who she is in the chat, but I'd like to, I like to actually have her explain more of that. So I'm going to bring her on and let's drop some uh, pony emojis, applause emojis, and we'll get the show started. Hey. hey! What up, what up? How you doing? How are you? I'm good. Yeah, how you look? I look good. How are you? I'm good. Are you, how's my, how's my audio? Can you, can you hear me pretty well? I can hear you. Yeah, it's. I think it's more like now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I can hear you. But yeah, how you been? How you how you been living? How you been living? I've been living. Oh my gosh, sleeping more. That's a, that's a thing. Cool. And uh, <laughs> where are you where are you staying at right now? I'm in Inkster. Inkster, Michigan. <laughs> hey, represent. <laughs> hey. Play, but, you know. Hey. You got some. You got some fans in the in the comments. I know. Um, hi, Daisy. Hi, Laura. Brittany. Hey, y'all. <laughs> uh but now i want to thank you for uh willing to come on the show uh you know i guess to kind of start with with how we know each other uh obviously university of michigan all my university of michigan people let me see some m's in the chat yeah, uh you know i think we met we met through asa which is the african students association program at u of m and then ever since then i think we've just been cool been friends but i feel like kind of you know afterwards i saw you just kind of making some moves. I was like, what kind of, it's kind of interesting. So I wanted to really, uh, I think I enjoy your story. I don't even know it fully yet, but I want, I felt like it was worth, you know, bringing you on and highlighting it. So, uh, yeah, let's start with like, just tell us about yourself, who you are, where you're from, all that. Yeah. So I'm from Inkster, Michigan, which, um, I don't know if everyone knows where that is, but that's, it's really close to the DTW airport, you know? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, you can it I think it's pretty central between Ann Arbor and Detroit. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in both areas. But you don't you don't um, rep Detroit though. You don't you don't do that fake stuff. I mean I uh, don't yeah. people because I know people in Detroit are very specific. Yeah. But no, I, I was always in Detroit for some function or event, but you know, I love Detroit. Yeah, Detroit yeah. loves me, but you know, know Detroit. Okay. You know, Oh, so are you from there? Were you born there or what's up? Yeah, so actually I was born in Detroit, raised in Inkster, and been in Michigan my whole life. Bet, bet, bet. And then I guess kind of like, what did you major in? Obviously you went to UVM, but what, what did you do there? Yeah, so I did international studies major and then the Ross minor. Okay. I graduated in 2016, did a whole bunch of stuff. Too much okay. probably. Okay. Uh, we met at ASA. I was trying to figure out like exactly when we met because i don't remember like being formally introduced to you yeah it was just like i don't know (laughs) that's what it is i feel like with asa a lot of the people that i know that that were cool now just kind of like we're just doing activities together all the time you just eventually just get to know each other so i think that's what it was you know obviously the culture show all that it was just it was a good time and um so okay you said international studies and then ross minor and I guess before we get into more of your story, like what made you want to go that route? Like what were you planning to do before you graduated? Yeah. So I knew I wanted to do like accounting and business, but I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to like make it work. Yeah. So initially when I like when I wanted to go into Michigan, it was like, okay, Ross all the way. That's the only thing I want to do. But then once I didn't get in, it's like, all right, so what else can I do? How else can I pivot? And right. econ was not an option for me. Um, I was not interested in taking any more econ classes after like the first one. Uh-huh. Um, but what I realized, like you can really do whatever you want and still make it work. So right. I took all my business classes that I needed to like take in like the accounting classes, but the international studies just allowed for a lot more flexibility. Like I actually took classes that I wanted to, you know, that I found interesting gotcha. and have, I think that was probably the best decision because I had so many incredible opportunities because of that. Studied abroad, did a bunch of like things, went on um kind of like a volunteer trip with one of my professors and some students. Gotcha. Where'd y'all go? Uganda. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I was right. there for a month, which was 
again, like just some of the things that you don't necessarily realize that are opportunities until you start talking to people. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, yeah. So I feel like that's the story of my life. It's kind of like, okay, there's been a bunch of different opportunities, and then yeah. it's like, all right, let's let's take a step and see what happens. Got you. And then with that, so like obviously with that, I kind of understand why you chose where you work right now. With I'm gonna let you talk about, but you know, obviously, I'm assuming you author being an author isn't your full time job or being in pageants. So like, what 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 gets you paid? What's your nine to five? Yeah, so I'm an accountant still. Okay. And I actually, so when I graduated, I worked in public accounting. Uh, if anyone knows about public accounting, it's um, an interesting place to work. Mm -hmm. And I knew I didn't want to be there long term, but I did want to still leave uh, some, I don't know, just something, leave it like a, in a better place than I found it type of a thing. So the book that I wrote, The A Guy. Okay, okay. What is, what is it, it was, about? It's really just helping people transition better. Um, some of it is like woody tips. Some of it is just things that'll help, like with the practicality of day to day. So I just had some ideas that, that I wrote down, and it turned into an actual handbook. Okay, but like, I feel like okay. So we all struggle with the school, and then you know figuring out what corporate life is. But we don't just write a book. So like, how? <laughs> How, like, what made you feel like, like, did you always wanted to write a book? Like, it just seemed like such a big jump, you know? That was definitely one of the things that was like, oh, this is kind of an opportunity. Let's kind of take it. And it was, I was talking to my coworker because we were both kind of like going through something at the same time. And um, we were just like, okay, this can be improved. This can be improved. This can be improved. And I'm like, we should just write a book. And I was kind of joking about it. And then I'm like, wait a minute we can we can actually do this like this can happen really uh, and at what point in your career like was this like first year first couple months like how how deep well i started september 2017 i knew by december 2017 that i need to leave yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know exactly how to do it i didn't know what i was going to do next okay like, and just like you know advance and try and learn as much as i could so that September 2018 that's when I actually wrote the bulk of the book so I guess a year in oh wow so like you were hating your job within two months but like I also noticed you ain't say the employer I don't know if you're still working for him but we, we ain't got to expose oh. him no you um, what no you that's right. the I, I like the company like the company oh, okay, okay. great you know just opportunities in general yeah they've really done a lot to just help me personally and you know professionally Mm -hmm. um but i didn't like the work of an auditor so that's what specifically i was doing that it's like okay. i'm you don't want me in your audit room i don't want to be in your audit room yeah, yeah, and yeah. i i wanted to still stay a little bit longer just because it's like i don't want to just up and leave just because i didn't like it per se but it's yeah at the same time it's like i'm not about to break my back over something that i know i don't want to do long term so yeah yeah okay yeah. okay i kind of understand so then like kind of take us through that so when you put in your mind, or you and your friend were joking, you're like, okay, I'm a, we're gonna write a book. What yeah. was your first step? Like, how did you get to that point? And like, just take us through that step. I've never written a book, so I don't really know. <laughs> Yet. I feel like you're probably gonna write one. Okay. Um, but I literally was just writing down, cause we were, it was at work, it was during work. And we were just like, you know, I am each other on the, on the little web, on the Skype. messenger side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that we had. And um, after he talked, I literally was just writing down notes of things that I'm like, I can talk about this, I can talk about this. And it was like a bulk of the book was written in maybe like 30 minutes. I felt like God was just like, no. you know, it, it just got in the booze, just started freestyling. <laughs> and I'm just like, listen, this, this could be something. Hold on. Okay. But um, I actually took it to a publisher. Like, I didn't want to self publish for this one because you can do it and there's steps to kind of make it more simple but i wanted to go through someone that just had more experience and she does that full time yeah and we went back and forth because it's like all right what you have is good what i had was good but it was just like i needed to beef it up more and get more relevant content so that's what actually took a majority of the time like what else can i write about that will can still help people and i'm not just rambling yeah. um but will give the book a bit more substance 
Got you. And uh, in terms of writing a book, is it a matter of like, like, did you have to sell them on your idea of like, yo, I'm writing this book. I think it'll be helpful. Please publish it. Or were they just willing to, as long as you pay, we'll, we'll publish your book. As long as you pay. <laughs> really? That's and anybody can write a book. Okay. Literally anyone. So it's just like, you still want to make sure that it's, you know, good content. You're not just writing rubbish. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, and she'll go through the editing process. Like I, I had her edit it and publish it. Yeah. So with the editing part, she actually um, like went through and just like made sure like everything made sense. Like as a third party, like does it make sense if someone else just picks it up and reads it? Yeah, um, it really helps with the flow of it and, you know, just making sure that it made sense. Got you, got you. And then I, I think I started to notice after a while that like you were kind of going around and were you doing like speaking engagements where people reaching out to you? Like we like your book. How did that, how did that happen? Yeah, so a lot of the people that I met was through NABA, so the National Association of Black Accountants. I'm a part of that group. Mm -hmm. And since I was already part of it, I was talking to the people there, especially like the student leaders, like, hey, if you guys want me to, you know, come and I can talk about my book. And it was really just as a resource. Like I wasn't asking for, I wasn't trying to sell it. I just wanted to like get it in the hands of people that I think could really use it. Um so it was really just like personal connections that they were like, yeah, we have this availability. We have this day, just come over and make it work. Oh. And then like, were you like, like how busy did that make you? Were you like going like everywhere trying to do this, all these speaking engagements or like, how did that, like, how did you plan that aside from your actual work and then just extracurricular? Yeah. Um, how did I make that work? I didn't do a whole lot um, of schools. Like I went to MSU a few okay. times, went to Eastern. I had to do a virtual one um, just because like I couldn't get there. It was like central. I couldn't get there physically. And that's like yeah. two, two and a half hours from where I am. Okay. And it's like just the timing of the month, like I just couldn't make it work. Um, and then I had more planned for the second part of the year. Okay. But, but, uh... Gotcha, gotcha. Dang, COVID messing everything up. Yeah, and, and like, um, with that, I mean, I want to get into the whole pageant stuff too, because I want to like know how that relates. But from a from a book perspective, what was your audience when you were going to these schools? Like, or who do you consider your audience right now? Yeah, so people who are in um, a lot of the business clubs. So it could be the um, their like business association. Mm -hmm. So that Rona, yes. <laughs> The Micah Hank. Hey. <laughs> also be the people in the accounting club. Um, the NABAs actually were like the predominantly people because I knew them personally, but it really was just to talk about anyone who was interested in the business field. So um, mm -hmm. just want to get people a better sense, a better transition. Gotcha. But do I have to be in a business, I guess, you know, background or whatever to benefit from the book. Because if I was to ask you, let's say you didn't know my major or like what I did, right? And I said, should I get your book? And if so, why? Like, what is even the value of it? Like, what should I, like, what would you answer to that? I'd say in a lot of transitions, especially from undergrad to the real, real world, whatever, yeah. you, like, why not have an extra tool to help you in that step? You know, whether it's, I talk about like writing emails, like, how do you like, you know, communicate. If you're CC'd on a bunch of emails, like how do you kind of like handle those different situations? Um, how mm -hmm. client engagements and interactions. So a lot of times gotcha. that those first year associates, you might start, you know, interacting with the clients a little bit. So it can be, you know, it could your client can technically be your outside client or it could be your your seniors. It could be your managers. So how gotcha. do you actually navigate all that? Um it yeah. just you know, an extra tool to have. Gotcha. I see. So I think if I was to summarize it, I feel like it's really more, or the, the biggest beneficial is like you're transitioning into corporate America. Like, I feel like yeah. we don't really have those skills maybe taught per se in class. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you, what do you think it's still beneficial for somebody? Let's say, I feel like I'm kind of in this step right now where like, you're, let's say you've been working for about two years full time and you want to just pivot what you're doing in terms of your career, like, do you think you could still apply some of these um, principles from your book? Definitely. Um, and one thing that I also considered while writing this 
even for the seniors, like the people that are getting more advanced in their career, you yeah. kind of forget. Like I was a, I was a, um, who are we paused? Can you see me? You paused me. Or just, I think you, I missed that last part. Okay. Um, so I was saying like, even if you're more advanced in years, sometimes you forget like, oh, I was a first year and I kind of, you know, you know, can forget some of the things that I had troubles in. So uh -huh. this is kind of also to help because if you're, it can kind of bridge the gap between the seniors and the first years or second years because mm -hmm. they might forget, oh, I was, you know, at this point. So how do I communicate? How do I actually, you know, take what this information has and apply it specifically for our clients, for our mm -hmm. engagement, for, you gotcha. know, whatever we're on. Um, okay. But if you're able to pivot completely, it can still be helpful. I think, especially if you want to even go into um, entrepreneurship, it can be helpful because I also talk about accounts, like different accounts, mm. and how you think through those and how people really, like if you were to get audited, how should you think about your accounts? Because mm. you always have to manage your money. You always have to yeah. make sure your money's right. So right. this can be helpful. Like, okay, well, if someone else was looking at it, this is the type of thing that they'd be looking for. So how can I make sure my stuff is already in order then that I don't have to, you know, do a bunch of ramble and scramble work at the last minute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's good. I'm, I'm actually glad that you mentioned that because I think I want to kind of get to the point that it's a valuable book regardless of where you are. I think really the uh, big thing I take from it is just change. If you want to go through a change that you don't feel like you're ready for, you want some additional tools to help you towards that, I feel like your book does a, a great job of that. And so I want to ask you, like, did it give you some type of confidence? Because can, I want to learn more about this whole Miss Black uh, Michigan 2020 and like how you even got involved in that or what that even is. Yeah. So these were two completely separate things that I never actually anticipated doing. So kind of back when I said like things I wasn't necessarily, you know, planning for, but opportunity yeah. came and it's like, okay, how do I actually make this work? Um, so it gave me, like, I finished something, I finished like this process and it's, anyone can do it. Anyone can write a book. The biggest thing is just keeping your ideas organized, um, mm -hmm. and then not being afraid to bring it out to someone because what I've heard people like hoard their ideas because they either don't want someone to take it or, um, I don't know, they don't think it's good enough, but it's like, you know, maybe take some time with it, but don't ever stop. Because one thing that this corona is teaching us, <laughs> not, like life can shut down and life can stop, but like what are yeah. you doing, you know, to better yourself? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, with this Miss Black Michigan, <laughs> I was just looking for, um, I guess, different opportunities to advance myself. Mm -hmm. And specifically, you know, in the scholarship realm, because I guess this is the thing that I, I was going to tell you later, but I'm actually going to law school. So we'll talk more about okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> that. I could have put that in the caption, yo, that you're on information. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was like, I don't know if you want to talk about this now or later. Okay, but get into that. Yeah, because uh, I knew I, I needed to transition. I knew I was going to be leaving um, public accounting. But I didn't know exactly, you know, for a while, I didn't know what, what I wanted to do. So when I figured out, yes, it was law, it's like, okay, how do I best prepare myself? How do I get the different resources that I need to, you know, just be the best that I can be? How do I get the scholarships? How do I get all these different things? That way I don't have to put as much stress on myself and I can actually like go forward and just kill my law career. And I'm just excited for it. Yeah. So... Miss Black USA um, and Miss Black Michigan, it's a scholarship pageant. And so they help women, Black women, advance in their careers. So you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a politician, you can be an artist, an actress, whatever, and they support you. Um, they give you different you know, networking opportunities. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> Hi, Wilhelmina. Um, <laughs> and also provide you with the means to, be actually, to actually do that. So they put their money where their mouth is and really support the black women, you know, going forward. Oh, right. I see. So that's, I, how, I so what? so that's how I got into it. 
Gotcha. Yeah, I've been seeing you with your little tiara everywhere. I was like, what? what's going on right now? But that makes sense. That makes sense. Ooh. I haven't named her, so maybe you her? her name. Yeah, it has to be her. You got it with <laughs> me. Flex it. Flex it real quick for the, for the fans. Okay. <laughs> Even though your video, the video probably kind of kind of crashed right now, but yeah, listen, my Android is old. All y'all, old. oh my. Yeah. I can't do no more lives with Androids, but you know, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it going though. <laughs> so, uh, so that's dope. So it seems like you really just, you got to the point where you were like, well, I can write a book, so I can do whatever I want. So I think that's really dope. I'm, I'm really trying to be on that wave myself, and I feel like. A lot of people that either watch this or just are trying to really advance their life, they're just realizing like we we can a lot of the things that we think about we can do, right? So I think it's dope that y'all doing that. And like for the Miss Black USA, do you feel like there's other benefits? Like, is your main goal like, oh, I'm just trying to win, I'm just trying to be number one over there? Like, what's what's really like kind of your end goal with it? Yeah, no, I definitely want to be like because it does come with the platform. It does come with like. Um you know, just different networks and different opportunities for that. So I guess my platform, what I'm really trying to do, hey, Sydney, is to really go forward and help the Black community economically. So with my law degree, I really want to um, help with the trade and the investments and like city development and planning. And one thing that I was realizing, especially in this time of Corona, it's a perfect time for investors to buy low and then eventually sell high. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that might mean the gentrification that might mean pushing people out of their, um, the places that they were living and not have it benefit the people who are actually there. So I'm not exactly sure how I want to do that, but yeah. you know, just Make taking sense. the steps, you know, necessary. Um, but with that, what Miss Black, what Miss Black USA does, they partner with so many of these, you know, the politicians, the big brands and whatnot to really help with that process. So I I definitely want to like win, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also want to be of service. So I do have a couple several things lined up for the for the last part of the summer to really help, you know, with the blood drive, with um just different ways to get people funds, you know, fundraising and all these different things. So okay. definitely want yeah, yeah, I want point. it all. Okay, I want to. I was gonna ask you about the whole international community market, um, but I guess before that, I wanted to dig a little bit more into the whole uh, law thing. Like, so I, I'm assuming that you kind of you your your main uh, I guess motivation is you want to help people. You want to do that. Did you feel like law was the only way you could do that? Because obviously it's, a, it's an investment, you know, funds and all that. Like, why did you feel law school was really the way you had? Yeah, good question. Because listen, and that took me a while to get to. I did not always want to be a lawyer. I ran from the idea for the longest. Um, quick story, back in 10th grade, I took like a business and law class. Every class pretty much we were watching Law and Order. And I was turned off because it's like, I don't want to walk in somewhere and see a dead body. Like who wants to do that? Who wants to live that <laughs> yeah. life? Yeah. And I didn't realize like, oh, that's like a specific type. But then I'm like, okay, I'll give it a second chance took the second part of that and um all I did was read from the textbook and I'm like all right this isn't you're not making it interesting and engaging for me to actually want to do this as a career so I left it for years like I told you I wanted to do business accounting and um I circled back around to it like my sophomore or junior year of college and so when I understood like the different opportunities that you could have with the with a law degree the the title and the prestige, yeah, but then also you can be in the rooms making decisions. You can be the ones like putting your name on the dotted line, like yes, this whatever can go forward. Um, mm -hmm. and that's really what it's like, okay, well, if you need a lawyer in every aspect of business and every aspect of life really, um, why why can't I be the lawyer to to be in that room? Mm, okay, okay. I get you, I get you. So do you kinda have a um specific type of law you want to really be doing or you kind of just want to get the knowledge person kind of see what uh you know pleases you um a little bit of both like i said i want to do something with trade um city planning and the more and more i'm digging in you can do a whole lot to it so 
I've been talking to people, trying to connect with people to see all those opportunities. But I think that's one thing, like when I'm in school, like I'll learn so much more and get those like hands-on experiences that I can make a better decision. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking, okay. but cool. something like that. And I know I've been asking a lot of questions uh, for the people watching, but if you guys feel free anytime to just submit some questions to the little question mark box right there. Uh, but I just thought about something I was just thinking because we're doing it virtually, like with the whole mm -hmm. miss uh COVID, how are you guys still doing the whole pageant stuff like are y'all yeah. like walking on zoom and wearing <laughs> <y 'all sitting laughs> on like, how's that working oh no that'd be sad we're actually pushing it to february of next year so oh, i get, I get kind of a little longer yeah 2021 so um they're still actually trying to get all 50 states represented i think right now they have 15 or something i don't know i'm not sure of the okay. exact number but um one because it's going to be in dc and dc right now obviously <laughs> a lot going on in dc um so they just want to like wait it out and make sure that you know people are safe first of all yeah. and it's in the best i guess kind of condition that it, it can be got you and so like Obviously, you're trying to win. I think this is how it, you're trying to win Michigan first, right? And then, like, is it going to be amongst those other 15 states, or how does that process end up? So I am Miss Black Michigan. Oh, and... oh, so you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was like in the. Okay, dang, hey, uh... congrats. But I'm probably about these <laughs> No, so I'm competing for the national title. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Miss Black so, USA. Exactly. Okay. Oh, that's fire. And that'll be the full out pageant. Like whatever you see it with Miss Miss America, Miss USA, it'll be that. So the on stage questions, the gowns, fitness, talent, I think swimwear, something. Um, so all that. Okay. Oh, that, that that's actually really dope. Like now I'm I'm more okay. So now like you're gonna be going amongst you said about 14, 14, 15 other <laughs> other states. As of now, yeah. Okay, dang. And so, what what are the other things that you guys are expected to do aside from you know volunteering and all that? Like, what's the other kind of requirements that you guys were like gotta like kill before you can actually be that that top person? Yeah, I mean, I think it really comes down to the day of. Um, obviously, you want to be of service. Like, you don't just want to have a a pretty crown and do nothing with it. Okay. Um, so that's really where I'm trying to pivot because like the things I did have planned kind of fell through. Uh, cause you can't really do as much in person, yeah. but we are being creative. So I think I've really taken the time over these last few months to, um, to figure that out because I was deflated at first. Cause it's like, what is going on? Everything's getting canceled. Like, you know, what, what else can I do? Yeah, but then yeah. once you see like, no, you can still do so much. So I've been talking to a lot of different, um, like mentor groups and like I said, with people who do blood drives to figure out like, how can I still be of service? Um, posting is great, but I still, I'm a person that I like to be active. So I like to be hands-on. So just working in different ways that we can still make it safe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really the biggest thing right now. Got you. And have you felt a lot of support from, cause it's not like a great networking opportunity, but have you felt a lot of support in terms of, you know, the recent, you know, uh, protests, uh, police, police brutality situations. Have you felt a lot of support from your organization? Like, how are they trying to like, you know, help you guys and do stuff while you guys are a part of the, the team. Yeah. So no, we've made public statements about that just because, I mean, we are Miss Black, whatever state that we're from. So yeah. it affects our community, especially. So they were like, go for it, be vocal, say what you need to say. I know plenty of girls, uh, ooh, someone's writing something. I don't know if you heard that mm -hmm. in the background. Um, several of the girls went to actual protests. Some, you know, just depending on, you know, what you felt that you needed to do to really voice uh -huh. your opinion. Um, so no, they were definitely supportive of, of the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Got you. That's dope, that's dope. And I think, see, now I'm starting to understand more your story because I think what I also wanted to talk about is the fact, obviously you're of, you know, Nigerian heritage and like, hey. how much how much influence have your parents been, your family been during this whole time? Because I'm assuming like, when you said, I want to write a book, like, were they just very supportive? When you, when you wanted to do the Miss, the, pageant were they very like just trying to help you out or what yeah i feel <laughs> i feel like my whole life they've kind of just been like they hear what i say and they're like okay 
do it. Like they've never stopped me from doing anything. Um, so it's like when I see when they see that final process, well, like I'm toward the end, they're like, I see what you're saying now. I can help you a little bit better. Um, because I do have like a lot of ideas. So it's like, okay, what are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do next? So it's like they they're kind of used to me just like, oh, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do that. And then gotcha. you know, they're just like, all right. Gotcha. Help where we can. And then how is uh has your work has your work been like have they felt a way since your book came out? Have they tried to been like, dang, we don't we don't do that enough? Like have they what's the feedback been from them? Or do you even do they even know you wrote you wrote the book? Oh, they know. <laughs> okay. Actually <laughs> in my letter like exiting, I'm like, Oh yeah, by the way, if you want to get my book, you know, it's available. But no, several of the people um have bought my book and have given it to the staff members that those first years and are seeing like how it has helped them. Um, I've talked to the the office managing partner about it. So we're still trying to figure out something where we can, I don't know if it's a curriculum per se, um, but whether it's the training or something. So I'm still in contact with them. So they, so with EY, I should say they, they liked it. Like, I think it was just like, okay, I don't know if it's protocol corporate stuff. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of conflict of interest or whatever, yeah. But that's the thing, like, I don't spill any secrets because one person asks, like, is this like a you know, like, tell-all book? And I'm like, it's not a tell-all. Like, there's some things that you will find funny that you can identify with, but, like, uh -huh. I'm not, like, spilling tea on stuff. It's literally to help people. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of, like, you know, getting through this part and then, um, but I know, yeah, definitely people who have bought the book, who have said that they liked it. Um, talk to even professors and different, you know, student groups. So, uh, still just trying to figure out different ways to like really get it out there. And I've taken a step back from it for a little bit, yeah. but since the school year is starting up again, still making those connections and reaching out. Got you. So, what would be like if you had to choose one excerpt from your book, or just you can choose maybe from from your life, right? What is like? one thing you would want to just tell somebody that might be in similar shoes, whether that's, you know, about to change jobs or they just, they just have an idea in mind, but they haven't pursued it yet. What is your, your good summary of that? Like, how would you say that? Finish what you start. <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Finish what you start. You might, you might, um, it might not come out when you necessarily want it to come out, but at least you're mm -hmm. just, finish that application, finish writing that manuscript, finish that blog post, whatever it is, just finish what you need to, just so you can be able to, you know, at least have it there and make revisions as necessary. But you can't ever, I forgot what I was listening to, but they're like, how can God bless something that you don't actually have finished? Like put something in your hand so that okay. someone else, like at least you can present. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not my uh, Wi-Fi anymore. It's, it's the other side now. I used to get clowned oh, for that. No, no, your side was <laughs> black. <laughs> but no, I think you gotta. I think you might have missed the last part. But wrap up or say what, what that wrap up was about. Like what your advice would be. Um. So just finish whatever you start. Honestly, like that's one of the biggest things. And you like you feel a self a, a sense of accomplishment because whether it's something that you think is kind of simple or something that is more complicated, it's the fact that like, oh, wait a minute, I've done what I said I was going to do. Like that, and that's really big. That really helps with your confidence. That helps with your trust in yourself because if you don't ever finish every, anything and you just keep picking up stuff and dropping it, it might not, well, you can't ever get it somewhere. Like even if you do need to like have help, recruit help how you need to, but um get it to a place where you can like say like hey i have this idea i'm at least gonna get it down on paper or on your computer or whatever it is sounds still good okay cool, cool. Hey, i see y'all i see y'all in the comments uh, but not cool i appreciate that you know I'm, I'm we're nearing towards the end i don't know uh you busy i know you kind of i have a time crunch uh but no i really appreciate how you kind of like you know broke things down and for the people that weren't aware at the beginning once again uh, Barachi will be giving away a, a free copy of her book, The A Guide, and with the flex. Um, you know, really, if you're just in the spot of just, you just need another resource to really motivate you. I think it's um, it's a great resource. I'm I'm about to try to cop a copy. You, you got you got an ebook version? I do. Um, okay, I, I can I can send you the link. 
It's on Amazon. Mm-hmm. That. And how has that been by that? I didn't, you don't got to tell us all the numbers and all that. How has it been having kind of like a little side biz income producing little asset? Has it yeah. been decent to you? Peter, did you write? It's, it's been decent. Like I'm still definitely <laughs> wanting to figure out other avenues, but yeah. uh, hi, Karen. Um, but it's been, it's like, okay, I see what people okay. are talking about. Like, okay, these different, oh, she dropped the link. Hey, Freddie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. These multiple streams of income. It's like, you know what? It's possible. You just have to think about it. And what I'm learning right now is like, how do you pivot? Like, how do you still, okay, get the marketing down? Because like marketing, honestly, the social media, I don't really care for. But, you know, the kids nowadays, we got to do it. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> It's hard, like sometimes, like you just don't even want to take the time to post here, or post there, or design yeah. this. That, but so you just got to do it. You want to get that message out. So. Exactly, exactly. So now, um, hit, me hit me up if you need some help with that, y'all. I got you. I got you. I'm trying to trying oh. to get these get these creative skills out. You know what I'm saying? So you just said something. It's your fault. Hey, no, <laughs> <it's bad. laughs> hey, I'm I'm a, I'm I'm gonna charge though since you're out here making money on books. I'm a, I'm gonna charge you for that. I'm gonna charge you. <laughs> the best. I'm a, uh, kind of went off. I said I'm a char- I'm a charge you if you need huh? help. I'm just I'm oh. a charge. I'm just. I'm oh, just I didn't. Saying. Sorry. What? Okay. All right. Okay. So now your connection want to work. Okay, but but now nah, I appreciate you uh, once again. I'm I'm gonna wrap it up and then uh, wrap it up with the gang. But um, I think you kind of already said your words of advice. But if there's anything else while you still have this platform, feel free to let it get off your chest or just say some last last minute words. I say for folks um get out of your head I don't know (laughs) I don't know if you might be stopping yourself and I know that's something I had to I had to tell myself and keep telling myself like you you might be overthinking some things sometimes you just need to talk to someone else Mm -hmm. um that you that you can trust to get the maybe make the idea a little bit more clear or just like talk out loud to someone to see like oh maybe like this isn't as bad of an idea maybe I just need to think about it a different way maybe I just need different tools I didn't realize so um I I said in the beginning finish though finish whatever you you start or get to a point where you can at least present it to somebody um and then sometimes just get out of your own head not everything has to be perfect to a T get it to a point where it's presentable but I mean what does it say? Perfection is the enemy of, of progress sometimes. Yeah, true, that's true. And before, actually, that's a good point. So who would you, cause you, you've kind of just said, like, you've kind of just did it. But who do you feel has, like, been that supporting guide for you? Who's been there through all of this? Who's like, oh, hey, go do it. Just go do it. You have somebody <laughs> that's been that person? I have, <laughs> I have a lot of, like, support that it's like, is this a dumb idea? And then they're like, no, it's actually not. So... BC has been there. She's heard, <laughs> she's probably heard so much of all kinds of my plans. Brittany, she's been in the comments. Oh my gosh, for the longest. Um, hey, y'all. Scalaska, y'all. You know Scalaska, obviously. Yeah. Ashley. So there's been so many people that I've gone to and it's just been like, wait a minute, like, am I thinking about this wrong? Like, am I overthinking this? Like, um, does this make sense? Like, how does this help people? Um, Cause that's like honestly, that's the end. Of, that's the biggest thing for me. Like, I don't want to just put stuff out just to put stuff out. Like, I really want to be able to make an impact, and I just don't want to have, you know, even though some things might kind of seem like I wrote a book, I'm doing a pageant, all these different things. I yeah. know, and they will all tie together. Um, but they're like just a, different facets that I've been picking up that I didn't realize that you know on the on the start of this journey. Yeah, that's dope. I, I really relate to that. A lot of my friends, I feel like. I, I, I finally got comfortable to a point where like everything that I thought about, I like, I was kind of, you're kind of nervous because you don't want people to judge you. If, if they only know you as this, this and that, and then you kind of like, yo, what I always wanted to do, they're like, whoa. But I think yeah. when you, when you have the people around you that are actually, they want to see you succeed, they want to see you do well, like they're willing to support whatever you have. They might keep it a buck and say, yo, that's, that's kind of yeah. bad. But, <laughs> but like, if you should think about it like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely needed because I don't just want someone just telling me yes, 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 where it's just like like you do need some of those people for sure, but then 
sometimes it's like, wait a minute, mm, you might you might be off. <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah. No, but no, nah, that's dope. That's dope. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that's our time today. Uh, once again, I really appreciate you for uh, making this work with me. I know you're probably staying busy over there and uh, doing our little volunteering law school. Me finding out that you actually miss Black Michigan, you know, sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I appreciate you. I'm gonna um, wrap it up with the rest of the audience. But thanks again. Uh, please drop some uh, applause emojis for her, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for having me. All right, peace out, peace out. Cool, cool, cool. All right, what everybody? Once again, it's your boy, uh, Pony Boy Paul. Uh, just to wrap it up real quick uh, with some, I think, what, what I kind of got from that. And the the what I want to say, I think the biggest thing is like kind of been the theme amongst everybody I brought on is really like whatever you're thinking about, whatever you want to do, like just just do it. You know what I'm saying? I think we we sometimes get in our own heads and we and we feel like we can't because we feel some, you know, we're just scared, right? But, you know, I really want to hope, I hope that you guys hear this and you're able to just go out there, whatever that thing you've been thinking about, that skill, what, that finesse, that course, just go out there and get it. And it's you're only stopping yourself, you know? So once again, I appreciate you. I'm going to have this episode up for about another 24 hours so that you guys can ask, uh, a- answer the raffle questions. They'll be going up tomorrow night, about 9, uh, 9, 10 p.m. Eastern. And then, um, you know, we'll see who wins. Uh, so I'll see you guys in about another three weeks. Uh, for episode seven. Uh, Once again, thank you guys for joining the Paul and Pals IG Live show and uh, appreciate y'all joining.